three, two, so going. going. I hope Action. And to, um, uh, hi. You're listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. Uh, each week, Jesus, I... This is terrible. You're Dave Anthony read a story from American history to me, amigo. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. And why doesn't he know? Because he didn't listen when they were telling him what was happening in history, and he wanted to leave campus and smoke cigarettes and, you know, party a lot. And, and when teachers would tell him to pay attention, this is going to be important in your future, he was like, no. And the best part is he was right. Yeah, that's right. He's so successful now. Take that, teachers so who Stick it up said, your ass, teachers. Listen. <laughs> Or you'll do, or it'll, it'll hurt you. Uh, guess what, dummies? Nice try, dickheads. And called it, quote, his jam pad. Jam pad? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, so, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> my name's Gary. <laughs> Wait, is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. <laughs> this is like anarchy. On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> Come on, the place. Now hit him with the puppy. You both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo. No sleep tell hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. I see done, my friend. No. <laughs> no. Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. Oh, we've had some laughs, haven't we? We really have. I've had more laughs. Yeah, not so many laughs for me. Um, Gareth, we are uh, the dollop. This podcast sure. is brought to you by Fab Fit Fun. Oh boy, uh, you know what Fab Fit Fun is? Uh, it's a it's a sweet box of goodies. Um, there's, I'm going to describe it better than that. Great, get into it. Um, so it's a if you don't know what it is, it's a it's a it's a box that you get. Um, you you sign up uh, four times a year. You can get it. It's forty nine nine a box. Forty nine ninety nine a box. You get a full size box of fashion, beauty, home, fitness, and wellness products. Uh, it's seasonal. Sure. Right, because I know yeah. you enjoy your season. Uh, you know I enjoy it when the seasons change. Yes. And the boxes that change with them. You're a huge fan of seasons. Yes. Um. Uh. It's full size products. Fire, fire, you lava. Like fire. Yes, all the seasons. That's not flood. a flood. None, none, none of those are seasons. Um, it's a great value. Uh, th- th- these aren't uh, tiny things. These are full size products. Um, we uh, we've gotten two uh, right. Yeah. Uh, the ladies in our lives have uh, gone crazy for them. Yep. My wife is now wondering when the next Fab Fit Fun box is coming. That's what happens. Is I I spoiled my mother with one. Yeah. And then that leads to an addiction. Yeah. And that's the problem. And that's their problem. That's not our problem. <laughs> Why won't they respond to my emails? Um, you get a, uh, there's a membership, uh, right? Uh, there's a total, the retail value of the summer box, which is the next uh, box, is uh, $320. But you get this thing for forty nine. I mean, come on, forty nine ninety nine. You don't need to sell me, dog. I'm selling you right now. Um, so my wife loved it. Uh, you know, there's a poncho in there that she still loves. Uh, the, and she and she literally is like, these are my colors. I don't know what that means, but these are her colors. No, for sure. Those um, are things that you just don't ask any questions about when they're said. You're that's like, right. All right, I yes, knew it. They I knew they're your colors. colors. Yeah, so you, you love those colors. So you get fashion, you get beauty, you get home, you get fitness, you get all kinds of products in there. So sign up for Fab Fit Fun today to get your summer box. The Fab Fit Fun summer box is in limited supply, and these boxes always sell out. Always. So use the code Dollop. Uh, you get ten dollars off your first box. Go to FabFitFun.com to sign up and start getting the box for a life well lived. Use promo code Dollop. Do you get $10 off your first box? That's over $200 for $39.99. Go to fabfitfun.com and use the code DOLP to get $10 off your first FabFitFun box. Boom. You're my favorite FabFitFun. You I wish you came in the box. Oh my god. We are also what? sponsored by Blue Apron. Jesus god, you need to rethink everything you've said so far. <laughs> Gareth and I, uh, uh, we we often cook together. Uh, we do a your wife a, hates it. We do a Blue Apron night um, where we put on Blue Aprons and we we do our Blue Apron cooking. Nothing else. Um, this week, uh, there's some good. Uh, Remember when you threw that prosciutto and it stuck to my buttock? I do. 
always remember that. I was like the copper tone kid, but with ham. You would probably like this uh, creamy pesto cavatelli with mushrooms and spicy breadcrumbs. Spicy that like breadcrumb. Right. Um, I, I, this week, I'm going to do the pork chorizo tacos with radishes, roasted potatoes, and cojita cheese. Nice. Great for that. Cotija cheese? <laughs> don't try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, so basically, if you don't know what it is, uh, it's the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. Uh, you basically look at the, you go to the website, you look at it, you pick your meals. They come uh, ready to be cooked. It's super easy to cook. They're in, in already uh, sized portions. Um, yeah. There's a sense of accomplishment. There is, and it's super easy to do. You don't have to go to the store because uh, I don't like going to the store. You can get a two-person meal plan, a family meal plan. You're not allowed to plan. go to the store. I'm not, not after the incident. Um, Blue Apron is offering our listeners their first three uh, meals free. Yeah. You heard that. When it comes to dinner, let Blue Apron take care of the planning and shopping while you do the cooking and eating. You'll enjoy delicious meals like popcorn chicken with sweet chili cabbage. That sounds good. You know, lately I've just been eating popcorn for uh, dinner. You can do it in like 30 minutes or less. That's not a good thing to say. That's weird. Um, so easy. So it's really good. I'll eat it uh, out of the couch. Every, cushion. every meal I've made, I've enjoyed uh, the hell out of, even the ones I cook with Gareth. Uh, it's oh, lighthearted. It's to hear. It's, what, remember the prosciutto buttock? Come on. Yeah. Uh, so check That's out this fun, week's pal. Check, That's a good time. check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free at blueapron.com slash dollop blue apron a better way to cook. Nice. Um and we're cookers, me and you. Yeah, absolutely. No. I like to I'm gonna cook you someday. What does that mean? I'm gonna eat you one day and own your knowledge. We're also brought to you by uh and you know all about this, Casper. Yeah. You got yourself a sweet Casper. Damn right. Um, it's a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. At Casper, mattresses are perfectly designed for humans, engineered to soothe and cradle your natural geometry. And you got some sweet geometry, bro. I, Dave, stop. I'm blushing. Cas but I will also say yeah. it's great for cats that are yes. maybe a little heavier than the regular right. cat. They, 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 they it sink supports, right in. It supports both. A heavy cat. Human. I don't think they should limit it. I got a cat spur. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Next. Uh, the Casper brand mattresses combine multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with the right amount of both sink and bounce. Yeah, that gets a wink. Affordable prices because Casper cuts out the middleman and sells directly to the consumer. No hassle returns if you're not completely satisfied. Free shipping and returns in the U.S. and Canada. Yeah, it's all good. You, What happened when you opened yours up again? It was like... Yeah, it comes out of the box. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like reanimating comes, a person. Comes to life right now. I've read. Um, get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash dollop and use promo code dollop at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. That's casper.com slash dollop and promo code dollop for $50 toward select mattresses. And after you're done listening to this episode sponsored by Casper, check out Casper the Podcast sponsored by Casper. It's an entire podcast about Casper. We're competing against by, Casper now? Sponsored by Casper. What? Available now on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher. Casper's has a pod. Can we have Casper? I don't know, but I'm going to listen to that because that sounds hilarious. We got There's got to be, I mean... Have you never? So what else? Uh, you sleep on it, and so uh, you your body sinks in there. Yeah, yeah, we said that, and um, um they're pro. pro. Oh, uh, we got to do an ad. Uh, for Casper, actually, <laughs> uh, we do Casper. Casper sponsors the Casper podcast. <laughs> Casper is a mattress. Uh, Dave, I should promote myself. Uh, you can use promo code DOLLOP for $10 ticks on all these shows. Uh, 31st of May through June 2nd, I'll be at the Tempe Improv in New Jersey. June 21st through the 23rd, I'll be at the Stress Factory. Uh, Laughs Comedy Club in Seattle, June 29th and the 30th. And uh, then I'll be at uh, Dave's house for the rest of the week. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, please go to uh, dollop, uh, the dollop, dollop podcast dot com slash tours. And look at tours because we're going to be in a lot of cities. Yes, um, we're coming to. The last one we announced was Chicago, but we're going to be in Chicago, a Pittsburgh, lot, uh, Denver, Denver, Cleveland, the yep. Minneapolis. There's a lot of shows, so please go there and check them out. See if your city's on there. If your city's not, it might be on there soon. I, I love you. you. 1758. All righty. You're of our Lord Jesus Christ. James Callender was born in 
<laughs> well, okay. You're already, when was the calendar born, Dave? It's not. What date? And it's not cool. Yeah. It's not cool. Yeah. It's calendar. Not. All right, keep going. I uh, was born in Scotland. Oh, boy. Very little is known about his early years. By the time he was 24, he was an aspiring writer living in Edinburgh. So there's nothing we have on him until 24. Yeah. Other than his last name was Calendar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in 1782, he was hired as a clerk in the bureaucratic Saison office, which was a land deed. Oh, you know about that. Go ahead and explain Bloody that. Right, yeah. <laughs> Going to explain the that. Season the season office. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like you were saying earlier, there's four seasons, uh-huh. right? No. And you keep. You're don't, already... say, don't tell a calendar when the seasons are an ant, okay. boy. Okay. Uh, it's a land deed it's office. office. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yep. Uh, for all of Scotland, uh, who owned what, where, when, etc. Uh, he was not paid well working there. Sure. And he would write out the land holdings of Scottish gentlemen, so the rich guys. Right. So he'd just be basically uh, assessing the land of the wealthy. Not even assessing, just like, keeping, I mean, track keeping track. Of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at the time, voting in Scotland was tied to land ownership. So the records right. kept in the season offices were basically voting rolls also. So the rich could vote. Yeah. Right. Shocking. As it should be. Right. Uh, Someday I wish I could vote. Could you imagine? Allowed to cast a ballot. Oh, boy. I'm dreaming again. Get back to work, boy. Sorry, mum. Uh, sweep, 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 sweep. Why does he say, why would you say sweep? Because it gets awful dirty in here when I'm keeping track of the landowners. I know, but you don't have to say sweep, you just sweep. Oh, but if I don't say sweep, I forget to do it. Like now, sweep, 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 <laughs> sweep, sweep, sweep. Got to walk, 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 walk. Open door. With all... Slams with all, it. His power, uh, with all the power consolidated into this one office, it obviously became insanely corrupt. Sure. James was described then as having, quote, a complex and contradictory character. <laughs> he was so self- he was Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the letters. He was <laughs> self righteous. Bring it. <laughs> he was self righteous, strongly puritanical uh, with regard to personal morals, insufferably proud with a deep and abiding mistrust of human nature. Okay. So, so totally just cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Super relaxed. Sure. Yeah. That's, I think, how you're supposed to, That's a better way to be now, though. Yeah. I'd rather... I think you should be like that over like, boy, mister, you got a job for me? <laughs> now you got to be like, hold a gun. Get a gun. We all need him. Uh, in 1785, James spoke as a representative of a group of clerks who wanted better pay. And... Uh, their boss, Andrew Steele, investigated for corruption. Okay. So he speaks for those guys. Sure. Um, that didn't go well. Right. They normally don't. They frown. The rich frown upon that. that yeah. Per, the person in that not position. Not a big fan of right. you. Yeah. Uh, Steele then uh, made uh, work a living hell for James. Uh, at one point, Steele, quote, came over with pistols and a bludgeon in order to murder James. Well, that's just not, uh, it's not okay in the workplace. Did well, they not have posters up? I think that back then it was fine. Okay. Yeah, you could murder your employees in um, Scotland. How was time. work, James? Well, it was all right. Boss keeps saying he's going to murder me. You've been killed? Hey, stop was me that, again. Was that Scottish? No, no, no. no. <laughs> that was with, if we were to translate an ape into English. <laughs> is what that was. Um... But he didn't kill him. Um, uh, but then for the next few uh, days, uh, Steele would uh, walk around the office with the guns. Ooh, I'll tell you, after lunch, I'm feeling like a killing. Yeah, that's right. Someone's getting killed. He's doing. He's like a season finale commercial. Someone will die this week on Steele. He's straight up the fucking gardener from The Simpsons. Right. Okay. Um, for the next five years, James endured a... He, so he still works there for five years. He's a hostile sure, I mean, working look, environment. it sucks, but you can get through it if you just realize yeah. he's not really going to kill you. Yeah, I mean, we've already figured out he's not going to kill you. So just hang in there and stick with it. Uh, and then he was fired in 1790. For not being killed properly. <laughs> so he's now broke. He's been slandered by Steele, and he has a family to support. So as a writer, he had previously published two pamphlets about Samuel Johnson. Sure. Who was a popular intellectual in England. Johnson was not big on Scottish people. Okay. 
He insulted them and called them ignorant. The Scots did not like the shit talking from Johnson. And so when James published his pamphlet uh, titled Deformities of Samuel Johnson, the Scottish people were really into it. Okay. <laughs> so he put out a mean tweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he's deformed. He's improper. He's a fucker. <laughs> okay. That was all right. Dave, look, we can't. I, I need you to just feel free to just let it let it fly. I'm not going to come at you. Okay? Safe space. Okay? <laughs> this isn't the internet. This is you and me. I got you, baby. Uh, it focused on Johnson's dictionary. So Johnson had written this dictionary, which was one <laughs> of the f- first attempts to categorize and organize English words. Wow. Okay. So yeah. th- at the before they were all in a book. Yeah, he, okay. this guy. This guy. When they were scattered, when yeah. you would just be like Scrabble was a bigger argument. No, back before then. this, you there were just words laying around in pamphlets. Yeah, and then this guy put them all in one book. Right, right, okay. Well, I'm off to the, you know I've got to go to bed. I'm really kind of wax it. That's the word. It means tired. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. So James claimed the dictionary and Johnson were both useless. Quote: Hey man, this bloody dictionary. In almost every department of learning, from astronomy down to the first principles of grammar, Johnson's ignorance seems amazing. <laughs> Which is a word. His personal appearance cannot much recommend him. His conversation would shock the rudest savage. I have attempted to illustrate his entire want of general learning, his uh, antipathy uh, to rival merit, his paralytic reasoning, his solemn trifling pedantry. Wow. Yeah, so he's nailing. He's, there's a thesaurus happening. Right, there. yeah. He, so brought he's, the, he probably used he's the probably, dictionary. His dictionary, yeah. probably, yeah. yeah. Bloody helpful it was. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't it in the pamphlet without it. He has to put it in the, uh, the bibliography at the end. <laughs> well, I've got to cite my work. I don't so, want to be accused of plagiarism. Awkward. We've already been called deformed. Uh, okay, so he's just writing the... So, okay, so well, he's he's baiting in a way. So so this literary style of attack, mixing personal and professional critiques, was brand new. Okay. Uh, and it was similar to the writing of uh, Jonathan Swift. Both writer, writers rejected pretension, greed, and pride. Okay. So James then, after he gets fired, he turns to writing for a living. Okay. Uh, there are lots of literary... Did he have a pamphlet agent? He did not. Okay. That'll come up. Okay. Uh, there are lots of literary clubs in the city, um, but he didn't have any ins into them. Luckily, he received pay- patronage from one Lord Gardenstone. That's right. I'll, I'll help you, James. I'll be your Patreon. You know where I'll be, in the back, on that one stone in the garden. He helped James get work with a famous lawyer, and they collaborated on writing Giuliani. projects. Yeah, okay. Giuliani. Uh, but the Lord was not comfortable with James' anti, really anti-English sentiments. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's Super, built up. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, in the early 1790s, Scottish businessmen were uh, tired of high English taxes and tariffs, and the American experiment is in full swing, so sure. America's kicking ass. Yeah, well, I, I, I think the, ex- well, experiment, I mean, the milk's yeah. turning. Yeah. Irish republicanism was threatening the English hold in Ireland. Okay. And in 1792, James published The Political Progress of Britain, which was strongly influenced by uh, Jacobin ideals of the f- French Revolution. So the uh, Jacobins are um, uh, the biggest body of the guys in the French Revolution. They're uh, really uh, hardcore. Okay. So they're the hardcore dudes. Sure. Uh, a lot of beheading, sure. that sort of thing. Sure, sure. Um, but the guillotine like, guys. Yeah, so they're they're yeah, guillotines. Yeah, guillotines. They're super. Uh, right. So y- you, it, I mean, there's a lot of different ways it's used now, but um, like they're considered sort of radicals at the time, right? Sure. So they're the radicals. The okay. Leftist radicals. Okay. Whatever. So it attacked the British. Uh, his his uh, new pamphlet attacked the British colonialism and tried to reframe the story of the of British expansion. It was all about class warfare and anti-imperialism. Okay. Quote, since the Norman conquest, England has been governed by 33 sovereigns. And of these, two thirds were by a hundred different actions deserving of the gibbet. Of the gibbet? I think that, I, if I recall correctly, a gibbet is where you hang a dude in a, a cage. Oh. And then the dude dies. Jesus. Uh, a lot of pirates were gibbeted. 
You hang him in. What do you mean? You just let him starve in a cage? Yeah, you put him in a cage, and that's his. That's, that's his deal, and then he's done. That's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, not great. It's not a great way to go. And that's but, public. Uh, it's public. It's also uh, today used in uh, public schools in Oklahoma uh, with students. They, they put uh, students in Oklahoma in cages. Yeah, they have to be over ten, I think, between ten and. Six. There's a height requirement. No, they just they, they just Age. G- gibbeting is bad for kids under under ten. Yeah, you don't want to damage them. But you can give it uh, kids uh, uh, up to eighteen. Once you're once you're out of high school, I don't think there's any gibbeting. What? Is this true? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> None of that is true. Okay. England and Scotland were anxious about nationalist writings because of the whole French Revolution thing. Uh, so James was investigated. Sure. Uh, the leftist Scottish writers he trucked with, including Lord Gardenstone, uh-huh. were infiltrated. So they send in guys to, you know, spy. And and then in January 1793, James ran off to Dublin instead of appearing in court to testify about his pamphlet. Okay. So this these pam- he's a pretty prophetic pamphlets pamphlet are, writer. Pamphlets are a big He's deal. dropping a lot of pamphlets. The, yeah. He's having like his Dylan era. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he then made his way to Philadelphia in May. Uh, Lord Gardenstone died. Will you be doing any pamphlets while you're in town? <laughs> I don't know if I've got time. I'm working on a couple different pamphlets. I'm working on a concept pamphlet right now. Something different, you know, like from the perspective of a character from space. Do you know about prog rock? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Lord Gardenstone died soon after he left. Uh, it is said of a broken heart. What? Lord Gardenstone died of a broken heart. Well, he really liked him, I guess. Oh, he died of a broken heart because of James? Yeah. Dude, Gardenstone sounds like a little bit of a... Uh... Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the garden. Well done. <laughs> I'm going to leave the garden. No, super subtle. The Gardenstone. <laughs> Just threw a little shade at Gardenstone. Philadelphia was uh, one of the oldest cities and ports uh, but with a flood of recent immigrants. So okay. it's right. So it was the first urban melting pot in America. Sure. And with it, nativist sentiments were rising. Okay. Yeah. New immigrants and first generation Americans were not treated well by those who had lived in America for a while. Okay. So this is when Philly formed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, James saw a place uh, for a fellow like himself. Quote, it was the happy privilege of an American that he may prattle and print in what way he pleases and without anyone to make him afraid. So So he's he's like the Banksy of pamphlets. He is. That's exactly what he was. The Banksy of pamphlets. (laughs) Okay. James has offered some jobs writing uh, for ex-Irish radicals. All right. Uh, in one, he wrote a short column urging the United States to stay out of uh, the war between England and France. Okay. Which, you know, you know about that. Yeah, yeah, convinced them. James was a pacifist who thought war was inherently destructive. Unless it was against bloody England, Bruh. foolish losers. Yeah. He called those who were for war barbarians. Okay. And suddenly James was in the middle of a debate between the Federalists and the Republicans, the two forming political parties. Okay. We always get two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how it works best. Hey, the illusion of option. The two sides were arguing over how to set up a Democratic representative government. The Federalists, Federalists were rich, had more power, and believed in centralized federal government for banking and tariffs. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Ow. They were isolationists when it came to the war between France and Britain. Uh, the mostly southern rural Democratic Republicans, so that's what they were called back then, Democratic Republicans, mm-hmm. were into states' rights and sympathetic toward the French Revolution because they know likey England. Right. Uh, some of them were huge Anglophobes. Okay. Uh, the Federalists were happy to do deals with Britain. So James uh, didn't like or trust humanity much. Sure. He wasn't a big fan of the whole human thing. Sure. He was a I've always just gravitated towards birds. <laughs> My birds complete me. Shh. Oh, hello, fellas. Hello, ladies. You're the only ones who understand me and how horrible the bloody English are. 
Oh, stop it, you guys. All right, I'll take my shirt off, but only for a second. Kiss you? Well, all right, I'll give you a little kiss. <whistles> Shh, shut the fuck up. <gasps> that was the worst thing I've ever done. Absolutely. Um, so he's a, t- he's a huge contrarian. Uh, he has a hard no, time- I'm not. <laughs> he has a hard time supporting any group in political or economic power. Okay. Um, he was not big on sec- centralized government. Uh, he couldn't really get to buy- behind the idea of democracy either because he was uh, not what is a he? human. So he's just one of these he's people just a who's... just fucking crazy misanthrope. Right, okay. Uh, being a contrarian, James opposed the Federalists who were in power. Can the contrarians form a political party? Oh my God, that'd be the best. That would be huge. That'd be the best. It would be everybody. That's kind of the Republicans right now. I think we could find a lot. I bet you that would be pretty much everyone on social media. Yeah. So a yellow fever uh, epidemic hit Philadelphia in 1798, and between 10 and 15% of the city died. Okay. Uh, another 20,000 fled to the countryside. Oh, my God. The people in the countryside are like, now, hold on no, there. No, there you settle down. Hey, hey, hey. Yo, dude, a bunch of us are fucking dying back there. We got to come here for a little Get bit. Get out of here. Leave my fence alone. Don't tip that cow. 20,000. That's a lot. Yeah. A lot of tents. A lot of tents. That's when you get in tent business. No. You know I'm talking about? No, I don't. Wanna. Sell tents. What? Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? Uh, newspapers closed and James had less work. He started writing in support of the Democratic Republicans and got a job as a congressional reporter for the Philadelphia Gazette. Okay. It's a, a Jacobin paper. A what? Jacobin. Remember the guys from France? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. At this time, congressional debates were not recorded by the House or Senate. Okay. So four reporters were the only way the public could learn about what was being discussed. We're so close to that again. So they had they they gave them desks in the in the the debate and then right. They, so they're so they're in the in the room and they got desks near, like off in the corner or whatever. Okay. So, so. Pencils soon, down. <laughs> soon, a number of papers were publishing verbatim reports of the debates, but it wasn't easy for the reporters to hear them. And calendar complain, some congressmen spoke t- too softly. So some of it is inaudible. Yeah. So they're trying to whisper their way around it a little? And at the same time, they're dipping pens in an ink pot to write what people are saying So that's just like real slop. Time. So, yeah, it just looks like a dolly. Yeah, it's a fucking <laughs> shit fest. Um, Senator, I wish to do that. Uh, what? Congress can you t- uh, uh, bring it up a little bit? Congress bring it up? I think if we can just agree to do this, then there's absolutely no way to make can it. Can you talk louder? I agree with that, sir. I think what? Way, way for us to Guys. Uh, hey. Okay. Uh, as we were saying prior. No. Yes. You're covered in ink, boy. Uh, what? Foolish asshole. What? You're a foolish asshole. I'm writing this down. <laughs> what? All right. Um... So the way this worked is, since there's no official st- stenographer, um, was a, a stenographer the, was just an ink stenographer then. Well, so they're reporters, so they all have biases. Right. So it's not like a stenographer; it's guys who actually right. have biases who are now recording stuff. Mm, boy, that must be tough to find the truth in. And so they would then write their official versions, which led to them making guys. Some guys sound good. Some guys sound bad. Perfect. They didn't like a guy, right? Perfect. So right after starting the job, James was accused of misreporting an incident in the debates on Madison's revolutions. He said that one rep had called another rep a British agent. Okay. So that guy, the congressman, soon had the nickname British agent. That's very creative. (laughs) We are literalists. (laughs) And uh, a lot of people were accusing him of being a spy now. He was burned because of the name British agent. Because of what the yeah, that because sticks. of what James wrote. Sure. So he he was burned in effigy in his home state of South Carolina Jeez. in Charleston, where they have a store for effigies. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of person is he, man? I walk you through here. I can show you a bunch of different options as far as your effigy goes. <laughs> um, this pissed off James Madison, who was a Federalist who was pushing for better trade relations with Britain, uh, without. Uh, really knowing it, James had created conflict in Congress that played into the hands of the Democratic Republicans. Okay. So at the time, if you can imagine, 
congressional amendments were proposed just to try to embarrass the other side. Sure. If you can imagine that. Nope. If you can imagine that happening. In in government? Yes. Sounds a little juvenile. Members of Congress did not want these official records kept because much of what they were doing when they were trying to embarrass the other side was hyperbole and lies. Okay. Good Lord. I mean, oh gosh. Mm -hmm. Damn it. The 1790s have been described as the gutter age of American reporting. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson said, quote, Hold our beer. <laughs> defamation is becoming a, necess a necessary... Uh, defamation is defamation becoming... Defamation is becoming necessary. ...of life, insomuch that a dish of tea in the morning or evening cannot be digested without this stimulant. Even those who do not believe these abominations still read them with, well, I don't know what that word is, Compli complaisance? Complacence? No, it's not. Uh, and betray a secret pleasure of the possibility that some may believe them, though they do not themselves. So it's just all, he's saying it's fucking bullshit. Right, and they yeah. found an audience to buy the bullshit. Of course, Jefferson was super into the abominations himself. Right. Uh, while working for the Gazette, James was also secretly working for a Republican paper called the Aurora. Okay. It was one of the most important political journals in in the new nation of America and was very anti-federalist. Okay. In the Aurora, James exposed Alexander Hamilton's economic scheme as favoring the wealthy and entangling U.S. So he's he's kind of pointing out the bullshit of Hamilton and the fact that he's working with Britain too much and, and undermining people because he's wealthy, you know. Right, okay. So Jefferson... He's undermining the wealthy! Like, sort of, like he does a musical, sort of like, right? Undermining the commoners for the wealthy. Mm, it's going to be harder to rhyme. Yeah. Jefferson, then in turn, was attacked by Hamilton Papers. Okay. And at this time, one man's slander was another guy's fact. Uh. What Jefferson was upset about, Hamilton would call plain fact. Each side in the debates of early America thought that they were the hero, and whatever was said was worth it because the stakes God of setting damn up it, the country Dave. was so high. God what? damn it. What? Damn it. Damn you. So James is very against something called the Jay Treaty, uh, which was being uh, debated and put together, which many thought gave rights to British traders while not giving U.S. traders any advantage. Okay. So it's like a giveaway, if you can imagine this, like a giveaway to the wealthy, mm -hmm. uh, old schools. Sure. Hamiltonian economics relied heavily on the British system, and critics denounced it as being anti-republic. Okay. So James said... Uh, James is opposed to the treaty. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it was the same sort of thing that he had seen when he worked at the Cezanne in Scotland. Right. Right. So when the Jay Treaty was passed, Alexander Hamilton, so obviously he wrote about it and other Republican writers wrote about it and they attacked Hamilton. So when the Jay Treaty was passed, Alexander Hamilton was stoned in New York City in front of City Hall as he tried to explain the treaty to a crowd. Wait, because it, because it passed. Yeah, and, and people were hated there'd it. There had been such fervor had been created and people hated it so much. Yes. Alexander Hamilton was stoned? Stoned, pelted with stones. Oh my god! You don't hear that too much. No, you don't. I don't no. know if that's in the musical Hamilton. But, no, I don't uh, think. I yeah. don't think there is that part. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, they don't talk about that in the history books when Hamilton was stoned. What? People also thought that you. The problem is stones were everywhere. Yeah, I mean, you and the truth is, you can try to get rid of stones as much as you want, but until you can cure mental illness, people are going to want to throw stones. <laughs> So get rid of all the stones you want. People with mental illness, yeah. they're still going to... It's yeah. a mental illness problem. It's not an access to stones. No, it's problem. not access to stones. Now some, And I know some people say, you know, you shouldn't be able to get boulders so easily. Right. Well, look, I mean, you know what I mean? Boulders are there, so you're going to get them. Yeah. Uh, Anybody can get a boulder. Yeah, plus, you can get... Well, you go to a boulder show, you can buy a boulder in the parking lot. Plus the treaty says that we can have all the boulders we want. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... Uh, so the people also didn't think that that they they should be allowed to debate a treaty in 
in like private in this chamber, they felt like that was like some sort of betrayal against the people. So that was right. another reason he was stoned. Cause right. they were like, you can't talk about a treaty in private. Mm. Normal. Um, Closed door sessions, they call them, right? So James then attacked George Washington. Okay. He claimed Washington was no better than a monarch disregarding the will of the people. James helped make the democratic Republican, um, Oh, that got that disappeared. Uh, he, so he helped he helped f- f- sort of form the arguments for the Democratic Republican Party, um, and uh, he. But he was also very belligerent and uncontrollable at the same time. Yep, okay. if you can imagine, he went beyond went way beyond other Republicans in attacking George Washington. Writing quote. If ever a nation was debauched by a man, the American nation has been debauched by Washington. Wow. Yeah. You don't hear that in the history books. No, that, yeah. not a lot. No. Hey, he's got bloody horse teeth in his bloody head. <laughs> the only thing he can bloody eat is bloody porridge with animal teeth. He also warned of Washington's, quote, phallus designs against the liberties of the people. He's got phallus designs. I've seen him. He's got a whole room devoted to him. I think they're nice. Mm. Sexy. I don't think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, hey. Nah. Where's your deal? Huh? What is your deal? Why are you... What are you doing? Why are you here? What are you talking about? going to put on a nightgown. What? It's the middle of the day and we're in public. Hello. Okay. Don't think... He's not Scottish. I, yeah. No. Where, where are you? What are you then? I'm from all over. Where, oh, good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Awful nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he was very opinionated, James did try to uh, try to accurately report what he saw. As much as it's bloody infuriating. So he used two ways, two new, brand new ways uh, that were considered very unusual of conveying uh, unspoken meaning: shouting <laughs> and pigeon. So to editorialize, he would put an observation in parentheses. Like an action that was taken by so someone. So he's writing a one act? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so he'd write what the person said in the parentheses. He'd say what the guy was doing. So he's giving, or, so, so sort of subtext. Yeah, or he would say what the guy had said previously. He would compare them. Uh, <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes he would put words in italics to emphasize strong pronouncements. And this, people went bug fuck. Like they didn't know what was happening. Because they'd never had actually anyone sort of display inflection or like yeah. tone or anything like yeah. that before. So they're like, oh my God, it's perfect. <laughs> they, no, they were f- confused. Oh, they were just like, what is it? It's Martian. <laughs> they don't understand what's happening. Okay, now wait a minute. Now there's those two little half circles around a bunch of it again, and then it goes to the slanted yeah. writing. No, this and one is regular. Like dancing. Okay, I'm going to lay down, and when I get up, I want the paper to be regular again. When I, w- I just want to go to bed and the paper's normal. Oh my god! The words are slanted. <laughs> uh, some are slanted, and then some are in those half circles. And then guess what? Some are regular words. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> so, eighteen dead. Well, it was worth it. And what can only be described as cuts to himself. Um, the publisher kept with it, and um. People came around with the italic stuff, but he was eventually fired from the Gazette uh, in 1796. Sorry, James. You changed a lot of stuff, but your word slanting's just a little too weird. Crazy boy. So his wife and three kids had arrived in Philly in 1795. A fourth son, Thomas, was born uh, in Philadelphia. James' work became less reliable, and then he became the target of slander in newspapers, and his family slid into poverty. Cool. From 1795 into the, until the election of 1800, James and his fellow militant anglophobic Republicans wrote prolifically about Hamilton economics. Okay. They bonded over their distrust of the upper class. Most of them had been born abroad. Uh, James became very close with a Scottish merchant named Thomas Leeper. I can jump it. Hello. They drank together, they wrote together, and they bonded over the idea of a future United States non-dependent on foreign economic interests. Okay, so just getting shit-faced and just talking about, oh, can you imagine freedom? A fucking factory. Like a literal free market. 
Like, could you bloody actually even fathom what that would bloody feel like? It'd be fucking crazy. It'd be unbelievable. Right, let's have another drink then. <laughs> Chris, gosh, imagine it too. And I'm talking about like yeah. one natural currency, like something that's like unifying. Yeah. You know, no more bonds, no more land ownership. Just a place where, you know, perhaps everyone just... You know, plants their own seeds and picks their own fruit like a like a garden like Fuck a, me. Man, I'm I'm pissed, I really am right yeah. now. I'm it's all Let's going to my another head. Shot. No, we're having another shot, but man, oh just pick shit, man. Oh, I'd be bloody keen on that. I would be oh I'd be bloody nice that'd be. Oh man, imagine have like a bloody plum tree. Oh man. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've got a boner. Oh man, I'm, I'm, I was just about to say, like, something's changed in my yeah. trouser leg. Like, I'm really, yeah. like, excited about yeah. this premise. Yeah. Oh, you got one too. Fuck yeah. Dude. Okay. I've yeah. got a bunch of birds we can fuck. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh? I said, I said, mm, you imagine a free market, like a place <laughs> where everyone can. So, um, James had always believed in equality and believed in taxation to get it. So he then became a rabid. Uh, he became a rabbit. Rabid Democrat, which at the time a wizard's turned me into a bunny. Is compared to being a, a Jacobin, like I said, right? The Jacobin. Sure. Uh, James saw the U.S. as an aristocratic government where a certain class would hold power, as opposed to representatives of the rest of the population. It's amazing to call this so early <laughs> because <laughs> at, when the, we, at the beginning, right? Like, it. because we talk about it. It's so, like, I, I mean, I guess it's, it is like a propaganda method in a sense, but it's like, we talk about like the, that time, this time so wistfully, it's like, yeah. Oh, when it all made sense. And we even look back and we're like, well, they couldn't have foreseen assault rifles, Nobody but here's somebody it. who's just right now. Just like, Hey, it's already bullshit. Yeah. It's fucked up. What we're doing is fucked like, up. It's a bad path to chart. Yeah. The, the people knew it right away. Right. So he started talking shit about the country's checks and balances, saying it kept the government from doing the will of the people. His now radical views alienated him from moderate Republicans. Jefferson and Hamilton were both members of Washington's cabinet. Sure. Right. So they're so they're they fight a lot, but right. they're in the There's, cabinet. Right, of course. Yeah, well they're in the brotherhood. And they carried out their disagreements through the newspapers. Okay. Hamilton uh complained. So it's like WWF. Yeah. No. Okay. Hamilton complained to Washington about the attacks. Jefferson then wrote George a letter denying any involvement in newspaper writing. Okay. So Jefferson's like, I have nothing to do with that. He's lying, of course. Sure. Uh, having written articles himself anonymously. Sure. Uh-huh. Who's this Jefferson Thomas character? Tommy. Tommy. Jefferson Tommy. Jefferson Tommy, huh? When George Washington left... Jeff Thomerson. When George Washington left the White House in 1796, he warned against the, quote, spirit of party that would turn the disputes between men like Jefferson and Hamilton into a permanent state of combat. Sure. You mean one that is completely unresolved, so we just stay in a... At least... Pendulum? At least no one saw this coming. No. By the end of his administration in 1796, there were about 30 Republican papers compared to about 120 Federalist ones because okay. they have all the fucking money. Right? Okay. Jefferson begged James Madison to attack Hamilton in print. Quote, nobody answers him and his doctrines will therefore be taken for confessed. For God's sakes, my dear sir, take up your pen, select the most striking heresies and cut him to pieces in the face of the public. Okay. Jefferson then met James Callender. Hello, Thomas. <laughs> Take a seat. Do you like whiskey? Yeah. Scotch. Let's do this. Um, they met in a Philadelphia print shop. James now had the backing of Jefferson. Jefferson promoted. Whoops. Jefferson promoted whoops. Well, Jefferson promoted uh, the pamphlets he wrote. So Jefferson's now promoting. Retweets. Uh, James is, yeah, retweeting uh, James. At this time, public figures expected and had privacy when it came to their personal lives. Okay. If a writer was crazy enough to print personal stuff, he used the subject's initials instead of their name. Ah, yeah. loophole. <laughs> what does that matter? People can figure that out? Or is this before people knew what, what initials were? D was it like italics? DT fucks his daughter. Who in DT? Wait a minute. <laughs> It was pretty well known in some circles that Hamilton was having an affair with Maria Reynolds. He's My cousin. He's 36. <laughs> yeah, your cousin. He's 36. She's 23. Okay. She's married. Her businessman husband was invested in the continuation of foreign trade. Her business. Okay. 
James published his pamphlet History of 1796 in installments in the spring and summer of 1797. In it, he exposed the affair between Hamilton and Maria Reynolds. Okay. He dropped full names. Okay, all righty. Not giving two shits. Okay. James believed only virtuous leaders could ensure the vitality of the republic, which is how he justified airing the dirty laundry. Wow, okay. Yeah. So he's page six in it. Yeah, fuck yeah, he is. <laughs> okay. And the evidence he presented was compelling. James labeled the husband as a pimp. Whoa. And said since that was the lowest... F- of all human character traits, Hamilton's deals with him made him lower than just being an adulterer. Jesus. So, so he's, he's saying besides just having an affair, he's, he's worse than, than that because because this guy, the husband, figured it out and there was a lot of shit going on. Uh-huh. It was not just a guy fucking someone's wife. It got really weird. Sure. Right. Like there well, there's so, always like that. There was a fuck saddle. Like there was a, I'm pardoned? A fuck saddle. Wait, what does that mean? Well, you put a lady in a saddle and you... Uh, like a hanging saddle and a oh, like a swing. Do you not watch Real Sex, sex on swing? HBO? Yeah, Sex Swing. I call it a saddle because I like horses. Uh, okay, so here's what I'm going to recommend. Okay. We'll cut this out <laughs> and let's just plow ahead. <laughs> oh, plow ahead. <laughs> oh, David, no, 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 no. What is that? How do you even get there? You are such a horse pervert. Plow ahead, huh? You know what that makes me think of? <laughs> uh, stable bangs. <laughs> Um, you know, they sleep laying down if you fuck them right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Hamilton confronted James Monroe, who he believed had leaked the information. Okay. Monroe said he had nothing to do with it. I'm not the leaker. Hamilton then insinuated Moreau, Monroe was a liar. Okay. Probably and, by just calling him a liar. Yeah. yeah. And then Monroe, Monroe called Hamilton a scoundrel and challenged him to a duel. God, this duel stuff, it escalates yeah. so quick. So fucking You're great. a liar. No, I'm not. I want to kill you. Let's try to kill each other. How's Tuesday? It's so great. Uh, but the duel is averted when Aaron Burr calmed things down between the two men. Weird. Hilarious. Uh, irony. Yeah. Weird. Guys, guys, that would be insane. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> So James insinuated that decisions Hamilton made for the country were influenced by his dick and that he was corrupt. Okay. Oh, Jesus. I mean, he didn't say that, but I, I put that in modern. No, no, no. I get that. Yeah. I don't think that was in any. He used the term hot dick a lot, though. Keep reading. Uh, in August 1797, Hamilton responded with his own pamphlet. Uh, is this going to be a response pamphlet? Is this going to be a sad one? Like when, yeah. This is... <laughs> It's called, uh, it was called, Yeah, I Like to Fuck. No! <laughs> so, uh, in it, he denied improper dealings. So, he's saying the financial shit, the corruption stuff is a lie. Okay. But he did confess to getting it on with Maria. Okay. And proved he had been a victim of blackmail by James Reynolds because of the affair. So, okay. James Reynolds found out and did blackmail So, But Hamilton. he's the victim, so he's right. Well... He's saying I didn't do. He's I saying didn't, I didn't you, do deals with right. This I guy. was right. You. Uh, he's saying basically on the business business ethics side, my dick got me into a predicament. I don't have low morals. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Hamilton. It's a hot argument. Um, so response pamphlet. So instead of working with James Reynolds and being corrupt, he was blacked. Hamilton had paid over. Twenty-four thousand dollars in today's Jesus. money to this guy. That's nice. It's fucking crazy. That's a nice chunk. Republican papers responded to that by saying that Hamilton was trying to legitimize adultery. Ha- okay, sure, yeah, sure, sure. Right? Yeah. James put on out another pamphlet on the affair and Hamilton's corruption in 1798 called "Sketches of the History of America." He wanted to make sure Hamilton would not be president. And the corruption was never, oh, the corruption was never proven. Uh, the scandal subsided a bit, though the Republican newspaper attacks were on as they tried to discredit all Federalist policies and say Hamilton couldn't be trusted by his wife. So how could the country trust him? Wow. If you've ever heard that argument before. Never. So James was becoming more and more notorious and the Federalists wanted his scalp. Oh, boy. So the Gazette of the U.S. quote, in the name of justice and honor, how long are we to tolerate this scum of party filth and beggarly corruption 
worked into a form somewhat like a man to go thus with impunity. Do we want to answer that now? (laughs) A long way. The uh, article in the Federalist Paper finished by saying James deserved to go to the gallows. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, boy. Shit's heating up. Or we'll put him in the gibbet or whatever. Gibbet. Uh, publisher William Cobbett was James Callender's opposite on the federal side, Federalist side. Okay. Uh, he went after James and accused him of selling his ideals to the highest bidder and of chasing patronage. And he had sex with James Reynolds. <laughs> I'm swinging. Uh, what? I'm scandalous. Uh, do you like horses? Uh, oh, no. Hey, this guy. I thought you were kicked out of Watch town. Watch I can make this one lay down. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Cobit was slandering James' character and his beliefs. Quote, A little mangy Scotsman who has a remarkably shy and suspicious countenance. It's like he's trying to give a dog away. <laughs> <laughs> loves grog, wears a shabby... Loves grog! Oh, keep going. I'm sorry, this is gold. <laughs> wears a shabby dress and has no hat on the crown of his head. There it is! You hatless fuck! <laughs> there it is. Hats. I'm not not s- to mention he doesn't wear a hat. He's in a dress. I'm not certain whether he has ears or not. <laughs> he leans his head to one side as if he had a stretch and goes along working his shoulders up and down with evident signs of anger against fleas and lice. Me thinks he's in the thriller video. <laughs> Just doing what it is. I got it. I got it. Yeah. There's a visual component oh, to the hi. podcast now. we got to exploit it. Don't worry. Bam, bam. It worked. James' life was now falling apart. He fell into poverty and had to move into a poorhouse. Okay. His wife then died of yellow fever. Hey. Then Cobbett revealed that James had been anonymously publishing political tax in the Aurora. Oh, boy. People were livid. James was now not just in legal danger, but also physical danger as well. Jesus. James claimed his house had been broken into and his family threatened twice by wannabe assassins. Okay. Or but the assassins. Ninjas. Yeah, assassins don't come in and then just threaten. Well, I mean, maybe they got scared off by um, the dog. I'm going to just let this go away. Or back then, they also would use poetry yeah. against. Or some guy comes in and he just says to uh, James's, you know, he just says to James, he's like, it's a beautiful family. Be a shame if something happened to their father. And then he's gone. And then we yeah. just get a sketch a couple years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Thanks. Da- uh, disgrace- I did good? Yeah. Thanks. Disgraced and impoverished. James left Philadelphia for Virginia on foot in the summer of 1798. Well, I think I'll walk it. Uh, good boy. <laughs> the time when you'd just be like all right well i'm gonna walk for four months <laughs> it's like what well, he was too scared to go in a carriage because he thought it would be so he's just gonna walk it well because he thought that people were people people were looking for him so he thought that if he was in a carriage he could be found easily so he yeah yeah no definitely take the slow public route of walking <laughs> without any coverage for sure be safe he left his four kids behind who were put into the care of his old friend thomas leeper And as he headed south, he learned that he was still being hunted. Outside of Leesburg, Virginia, he was arrested, drunk and loitering outside of a distillery. Okay, so things are good. He was charged with vagrancy. Okay. Um, He made it to his destination, which was... uh, And uh, you don't have a hat on. uh, So uh, that's crazy and illegal. Uh, He finally made it to his destination, which was Senator Mason's home in Virginia. James complained to Jefferson that Republicans owed him for what he had done. Okay. He also whined that he was, quote, belied and stared at as if I was a rhinoceros. Okay. Yeah, right. Sure, sure, sure. And I am in danger of being murdered without doors. Uh, all right. So what's I, happening now? Um, I guess a lot of people back, back then carried doors around. Shut up. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You're people, messing it was with very me. common. Shut up. Um, it was almost like having a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your door? What? Oh. So he's saying there that he's afraid of to. He wants to be behind doors. He finds comfort yeah, in doors. Yeah. Is what I think he's saying. I think he's saying that he needs a place to hide out. I think. Right. I think. I mean, yeah. I can't well, talk. everyone's trying to murder him. I think you'd say if you're saying doors, you're like, I like doors. 
What of doors is like really ideal right now? <laughs> Jefferson loaned him fifty dollars and encouraged him to keep writing, which helped him get So Jefferson Oh my god, yeah. so James shows up, he's like, Thomas, my only friend, I bloody walked here. Oh, I thought I was gonna get murdered on the way. I need to buy a bunch of doors, I need safety, I need something. I'll tell you I can't sleep right now, but to be around a friend, finally the warm embrace, I'll tell you, it's like having a blanket on my shoulders after I've been cold for a while. Uh, well, here's fifty dollars, keep writing. <laughs> so no, I'm. Uh, no, I'm saying like uh, I'm going to die if I'm not careful. Fucking die. All right. Well, uh, you know, here's fifty dollars. You should write. Yeah. You know what I always liked were your pamphlets. I love your writing. Your pamphlets are great. Great. Hey, so the thing is, my wife is really weird about having someone who ever wants to murder crash with us. She's, yeah. You yeah. know, kind of yeah. one of these people, and she wears the pants in the relationship. All right, bud. Well, when you got a rough draft of that pamphlet, don't be afraid to come on over to Jefferson Jefferson's place. I'll take a look-see at her. So Jefferson helped him get on his feet uh, until he was hired at the Richmond Examiner. Uh, James started writing his next pamphlet, The Prospect Before Us, it was called. Man, these, it is so reminiscent to me of albums. <laughs> no, totally. It totally is. Oh, man, oh, I've just got to figure it out. I need inspiration. Like, what is this pamphlet about? This has got to be my Sergeant Pepper pamphlet. My Sergeant pamphlet. <laughs> um, this pamphlet was an argument against President Adams. Who's oh, so this got the parental warning. And for President Jefferson. Okay. Um, so, well, I think at this point, Jefferson is vice president. At this point, you, this was back when the you wouldn't be on the same party. So you, you, people would vote for either. So you could have a, like it was today, you could have a Democratic president and then a Republican vice president. Oh, right, right, right. It was the top two, right? That's people how it was people would just vote. People, would, you'd vote for your vice president. You'd vote for your president. It yeah. was separated. Oh, but I thought I thought at one point it was like you, whoever got the top two amount of the I don't vote. I think so. I, I might like be to wrong. invent I might things. be wrong. No, you might be right. Um, so James then published some claims in... The paper, uh, which resulted in a near riot as people tried to drive him out of Richmond. Boy, so this guy is just um, a bridge burner. Yeah. James was terrified and wrote to Jefferson saying he wanted uh, to leave newspaper writing and begged Jefferson to get him a job as a teacher or some or, other or, line a, a of door, work. A door maker. A door. Someone who creates doors and has access to a lot of doors. Got idea. Like, door. Oh, I'd love to live in a house of doors. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That'd be great. Christ. Um... Jefferson just sent James money for his advance copies of The Prospect before us. Can't wait to read it. <laughs> Keep us all posted here. He also wrote a letter praising James' literary ability to stir up uh, the public and expose corruption. Dearest Thomas, I fear that my writings have finally gotten me in a lot more trouble than we've ever anticipated. At this point, I think the freedom of expression is something I must cast off, for my views, when expressed properly, elicit violence from folk. Please, I need your help. Whatever you can do, do it now. Help me. Can't wait to read the next one, amigo! <laughs> <laughs> Love your stuff! XOXO! Tommy! <laughs> Uh, James was back on board after getting uh, this letter and kept working on the prospect before us. Uh, they wrote many letters back and forth, though Jefferson never signed his. Oh, interesting. Mm. Sincerely. <laughs> uh, James then published his attack on Adams. Future historians, he predicted, quote, will inquire by what species of madness America submitted to accept as her president a person without abilities and without virtues, a being alike incapable of attracting either tenderness or esteem. Uh -huh. <laughs> James called Adams, quote, a hideous hermaphroditical hermaphrod Didic? Hermaphroditical character, which has neither the force and firmness of a man nor the gentleness and sensibility of a woman. This is getting a little sad. Yeah. <laughs> Jefferson was thrilled, which was odd for a man who was friends with Adams. And James 
Calendar was kind enough to send a copy to President Adams. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> now say, what's this? Uh, hermaphro- hermaphroditical? And it- yet, even though I'm a hermaphroditical person, I lack the compassion on either side? Well, this is scandalous writing. And hot. And something about it's making me want to lay down. I'm tingling. That's it. I'm going under the blankets with no pants on for a little while. And I'm going to put my touching gloves on. <laughs> they did use touching gloves. That's right? right. I've got a set of gloves I use for touching. The, the fabric the Lord can't see your hands in. Invisible hand fabric. Now for masturbating. <laughs> wink, wink. The pamphlet also laid out what James believed were the roots of corruption in the United States system of government. Okay. The Federalists scrambled to deny all of his points with almost no evidence. This really weakened their reputation, and James pushed Jefferson as being the only true candidate to vote for. The Federalists returned fire, spreading rumors that Jefferson was an, was an atheist f- uh, from whom the God-fearing people would have to hide their Bibles. Okay. So He's a, coming for your Bibles. Yeah, it's the same thing. But He's coming to get your now Bibles. Now we do that with guns, but back then it was Bibles. They want your Bibles. <laughs> Imagine opening a hotel drawer and not seeing the Lord's work in the second one. That's why I joined the National Bible Association. That's right. From our cold, dead hands. President Adams then came after James Callender. In July 1798, Congress passed the Sedition Act which criminalized making false statements that were critical of the federal government. Oh, boy. So what are we, T-minus two years out? (laughs) Federalists wrote the legislation in a desperate act to stop Republican newspapers that were ruining them. Republicans then howled because it was a constitutional overreach that reeked of a monarchy. Republicans worried the Federalists would make the Senate or the presidency a lifetime position. Oh, boy. Federalists worried the lies coming from Republican papers would undermine the country completely. Everybody's right. (laughs) Just before the election on May 21st, 1800, seven years after arriving in America, James was arrested under the Sedition Act. Wow. The trial was incredibly unfair and not much more than a mockery. The judge was a huge Federalist partisan and wanted to lock James away. The jury was packed with Federalists. Jefferson hired him three good lawyers, but he was convicted, sentenced to nine months, and given a $200 fine. Okay. The judge said an attack on Adams made, quote, an attack on, upon the people themselves. Nope. At least at least this doesn't ever happen again. This stuff. Nope. In jail, James kept writing. And titled one new chapter, More Sedition. Oh, God. (laughs) Jesus. He's dropping more sedition now? (laughs) He just dropped sedition. (laughs) It's fucking amazing. (laughs) He's just so... He's just such a fucking curmudgeon. Um, What what am I in for? Sedition? What am I writing about? Sedition. (laughs) For my next sedition... (laughs) Republicans called, uh, Republicans uh, ga- uh, 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 gather around James Koslick, so they're, they're backing him up. Okay. And in the end, um, Jefferson wins the presidency. Okay. I had a feeling. A lot of because this, right, this stuff wow. uh, backfires. James celebrated, quote, hurrah, how I shall triumph over the miscreants. That's oh. an actual quote. Oh. So he keeps writing to Jefferson. I mean, it's about to get sad, right? Yeah. yeah. So he keeps writing to Jefferson. But Are Jefferson- you not getting my letters, Tom? What's <laughs> happening over there? <laughs> Jefferson is not responding. Yeah. So James worked on The Prospect Before Us, Volume 2, Uh-oh. a defense of Jeffersonian politics. Okay. So when he was released from prison after the nine months. He's, he's about sp- to come at Jefferson eventually, he, right? He, he, well. He expects to reap the benefits of all of his fucking help sure. for Jefferson, right? Hey, where's my room? Hey. All I've got's my bindle stiff. Need a shower before supper. <laughs> what we having? Ham. Jefferson pardoned him, and he pardoned all the others convicted under the Sedition Act, but he distanced himself. Hey. <laughs> James openly asked for the $200 fine to be given back to him. Okay. 
and for President Jefferson to appoint him postmaster in Richmond. Okay. So he wants a fucking job. Sure. He wants, yeah. And he wants the cash back that he paid. That's sure. bullshit. Because sure. he got pardoned. Sure. So he should get the money back. Sure. <laughs> Jefferson just ignored him. Okay. Now that he was in power, Jefferson did not need James. James was pissed. Uh oh. Is it pamphlet time? He wrote to Madison, quote, Uh oh. I now begin to know what ingratitude is. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. But James was just too much trouble. He was unpredictable and despised by many. And he wanted to change the entire Constitution and be rid of parties. So that obviously doesn't work for the Republicans or the... Yeah. Right. It's a uniting uh, thing. Yeah. yeah. James went to D.C. and... Instead of meeting with him, Jefferson sent Meriwether Lewis to meet with him. Lewis, How are you? Lewis would later go on the Lewis and Clark expedition. Okay, well. Small town. Sure. <laughs> James threatened Jefferson, saying he had letters that they had colluded to attack Adams. Okay. Lewis gave James $50 as hush money. What? Yeah. But nothing sobered up James' calendar like revenge. Oh, here we go. He went back to Richmond and got a job with a centrist paper called the Richmond Recorder. Here we go. This paper leaned Federalist. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. He's reinventing himself. <laughs> James started the work. Hi, of I'm Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> James started the work of tearing down the Republicans. He attacked gamblers and duelers and slave owners who had children with their slaves while pretending they did no such thing as upper crust Virginians. He then went after Jefferson. Here we go. Writing, Jefferson had always known about James' writings and supported him financially. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is, I mean, Dave, this is very similar. <laughs> Stormy. Uh, Hamilton published all of these articles in his paper wow. and accused Jefferson of being behind exposing Hamilton's affair. Jesus. Jefferson wrote a letter to Monroe, quote, I am really mortified at the base ingratitude of calendar. It presents human nature in a hideous form. It gives me concern because I perceive that relief, which was afforded him on mere motives of charity may be viewed under the aspect of employing him as a writer. Perhaps. I mean, I was just giving him ch charity cash. I was just cash. paying him to write more bullshit to get me elected. Ch charity cash. It's called a slush fund, dummies. Federalist and Republican papers began to attack each other. Republicans now attacked their old attack dog, James Callender. Okay. One wrote that James' wife had died from an STD. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh Quote, <laughs> on a loathsome on a loathsome bed with a number of children, all in a state next to famishing, while Calendar was having his usual pint of brandy at breakfast. Oh my God! Okay, so they're just painting some syphilitic woman dying on a bed with kids that, with their ribs showing, surrounding her while he's down there, yeah. like look, 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 look. <laughs> and then James Calendar. Went nuclear. Oh no! Oh no, Dave! No, 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 no! Oh no! In September 1802, he oh, no. published a report about Thomas Jefferson's affair with his slave Sally Hemings. Oh shit! It's go time. He used the racist language of the day in his writings. The story spread like wildfire. Like the syphilis his wife died from. <laughs> this was a quandary, as the Republicans had just spent years saying Hamilton was not fit for office uh, because of his uh, affair. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Jefferson just ignored all the claims. But James kept writing about it, and the newspaper's subscription grew. Oh boy. <laughs> his writing was more popular than ever, but he began to having an ongoing fight with the paper's publisher. The publisher accused James of sodomizing his brother. Wait, what? That came from is, out of left field, right? Sorry, what just <laughs> happened to the story? What is going on? Wait, sorry. The publisher of the paper that James is catching fire from 
is a, a bit of a curmudgeon towards James because he claims that James sodomized his brother. So James is working for this Federalist paper. Sure. But then he starts to not get along with the publisher, and then it turns out that the publisher says James sodomized his brother. Extra. Look, uh, the newspaper business is weird. It's weird. Reporters are weird. Uh, I'm not going to let you run with the lead because you sodomized my brother. Quit fucking my brother. Come on. Let me just run with that. <laughs> this story's got teeth. I'll tell you what, James. I like your gumption, but I've got to tell you, every time I look at you, I just think about that time that you sodomized <laughs> my brother. <laughs> You're on the crime beat. Oh, come on. What are you talking about? That's desk work. He fucking liked it. He liked it. Well, to be honest, part of the problem here is that I've always wondered what it would be like. Hello? Hello. <laughs> he was also constantly... Wait, is there an exp- is there, do we have follow-ups no, on this? No, we have nothing else about that. We have no idea. We so, just know that he accused him of sodomizing his Okay, so we've got an unclosed sodomy file in the story. Well, that's why Rockford Files covers it later. Sure. He was also constantly threatened by Republicans, so James started to drink. Stories of his behavior while drunk began seeping out. According to one story, he stumbled into his host bedroom, so the place he's living in, in the middle of the night and demanded that his servant be whipped. Okay. <laughs> that's quite a... Uh... Yeah, it's not to wake everyone up, but I was wondering if it was all right to whip the servant. <laughs> Okay, I'll just go back to bed then. Uh, so then James refused to write anymore. No, and he that. went on a four-week bender. Oh, those are long. That's a long bender. On the 17th of July, 1803, James was seen wandering drunkenly out of town. Okay. Later that day, his body was found floating in the James River in very shallow water. The irony. The medical examiner pronounced him dead by accidental drowning, and he was buried the same day. Years later, DNA would determine that Jefferson had children with Sally Hemings. The rumors were true. And, of course, Hamilton was shot by Aaron Burr. Yeah. Yeah. When he was like, isn't this weird that we're now dueling? Boy. So, so anyway. That, so what um, do we. So, first of all, fake news, it turns out, uh, is a part of the foundation of our country. It's not fucking new. Yeah. It's, there's always been fake fucking news. Yeah. Yeah. It is uh it is insane what happens when you deny people access easy access to truth. How how easy it is for people to give up on trying to find out what's real. It's fucking crazy. But that is the first that I mean that is like the this is like the inception of TMZ. Yeah. Basically. He's the first guy that went, you know, super yeah, that just went for it. That was just like, there's scandalous. literally no rules. Yeah, he's like, who there's gives no off the record. You can, there's no. It's freedom of the, it's, you know, you get free speech, so let's fucking knock this shit to the wall. Yeah. Go full fucking on. God, the firsts. The firsts. They're the weirdest. The best. Some, some might say. It would be great to get him into this world now and be like, thank you. <laughs> Happy dickhole. <laughs> but I like how what he, the one thing he did was call out how, our system of government is fucking shit. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, 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 during the during the time that we look back together. on as like this is when everything was perfect. No, was it? Yeah, it's like no, everybody was still like the same. We were, all, I mean, yeah, we were all just like, no, nah, this is bullshit. It's monarchy, yeah. probably. Yeah, this not this, this is going to help rich people. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I, don't, well, I mean, what do we expect? The, the, what's amazing is how. Don't do that. What's amazing is how this country was founded upon leaving the monarchy. Yeah. And we're just inching towards the monarchy. <laughs> King Trump. Think, yeah. Um, great. Well, that's been the Dollop podcast. Yeah, we signed cars. We signed cars. Oh, I should point out I was on the uh, Scalar Brothers podcast called Dumb People Town. Oh, you were? Uh, last episode. I yeah. enjoy that and podcast. I had a lot of... Uh, a lot of fun with them, and uh, yeah, they're good fellas. They're funny fellas. Good guys, and that's a good podcast on People Town. And that uh, and that DVK character too, that Daniel Vinker. Okay, yeah, he's good a good guy. one. Good yeah. guy too. Um, great. All right, let's go to Denny's. Thanks.